Hello everyone, this is James Shore with another Test Driven Development video. Uh, when we left off last time, we had just finished getting a basic capital gains tax uh, calculation in place. But as you can see right here, um, we didn't actually do it right. And let me show you what I mean by this. If we have capital gains tax of 1,000, or if we have 1,000 in capital gains and we withdraw it, and we're paying 10% capital gains uh, tax, then 10 times 0.10 is 100. But then we've now withdrawn $1,100. So we also need to pay capital gains on that 100. So that's 100 times 0.10 equals 10. And then we have to pay capital gains on that. And that's 1 and so forth. So in the end, we end up paying $1,111 total uh, uh, or no, we we end up withdrawn uh, with withdrawing one hundred one thousand one hundred eleven dollars, and we pay uh, capital gains tax of one hundred eleven dollars. Um, now, when I did this in my spreadsheet, I solved this problem, and I actually <laughs> I, don't, I have no idea how I came up with this, but it's actually pretty straightforward. If you take your thousand that you're withdrawing and you divide it by the um, the inverse of the capital gains tax, that is going to equal the right amount. So let's take a look at that. Uh, you can see I, I was practicing before I started the video. So 1,000 divided by 0.9 uh, minus 1,000 is 111. So we have to subtract uh, 1,000 there. So that's the correct, the correct formula. Um, as I said, I don't know how I figured that out before. Maybe I got it online. Maybe I just applied some some ment some math. I don't remember, um, and I didn't bother trying to figure it out again because it's in the spreadsheet and it works. I think. Uh, hopefully, if it doesn't work, you all tell me. Um, normally, of course, in agile development, you have a domain expert, you have a sub subject matter expert as part of the team, and they're providing these equations, and you're coordinating with them. Um, once again, I am not a financial expert. Uh, this is not financial advice. Uh, if you use this and lose your shirt, it's not my fault. But I think that's right. So uh, if somebody out there really knows what they're doing, um, please let me know. So anyway, here when we're saying capital gains tax incurred, um, we need it to include, uh, and we need it to actually include enough to cover the cost of the capital gains tax we're withdrawing. Uh, I hope that makes sense. It's, it's a weird little thing. So capital gains tax incurred is uh, sh needs, uh, needs to cover capital gains withdrawn and also uh, the the additional capital gains withdrawn to pay capital gains tax. It's stuff like this that I think it's certain members of society really worked up about taxes because it really feels like you're paying and paying and paying. Um, anyway, so we're withdrawing 5,000. That's uh, 2,000 in capital gains with, withdrawn, which means that the correct answer here, assuming a capital gains tax incurred, is 2,000 divided by 0.75 minus 2,000, or 666. We're just going to cut that off. Okay, and um, that's somehow that seems appropriate, 666. So let's run that test. Everything's going to swap in. There we go. Expected 666 was 500. So let's our, fix our savings account year calculation. Um, capital gains. Capital gains tax incurred is going to be capital gains withdrawn divided by 1 minus the tax rate. Oh, great. Here we go again. 100 minus the tax rate. Um, whew. Well, we'll just hack away at this and see, see how we can make it work. Of course, the problem is, is I'm using integer math rather than floating point math. And uh, that makes things all kinds of wonky. 
So we're capital gains tax withdrawn my, divided by 100 minus the tax rate um, times 100. Let's see what that gives us. That's not going to be the right answer, um, but let's see what happens. Well, it's getting closer. Uh, what was that formula again? It's uh, 1,000 minus, so minus capital gains withdrawn. Okay. <laughs> oh, that is just so, so wrong. Okay, let's, um, let's figure this out. Well, let's just use floating points for a little bit and see where that gets us. So, uh, tax rate divided by 100, point zero. Expected 666 was minus 1,999. All right, um, let's just do it this way. Double, double tax rate. Tax rage, yes, exactly. Um, Okay, is that going to work? Maybe. Um, expected 666 was 6,000. Oh, and I somehow lost my one minus along the way. Expected 500 was 666. Okay, that's the correct answer. Um, but Somehow it's, uh, okay, so right here, capital gains tax is included in ending balance. It's, um, it's not right at all. Okay, so, uh, the... Well, first, let's just take a second look at that uh, test result. Everything else is working, so it's just the test that's broken. And this was kind of a, a grody test anyway. Yes, I, I did just say grody. Um, so let's do it this way. Our int uh, starting balance after withdrawals should equal, let's call that expected, starting balance. I use these really long names, especially like this one, in my tests because I'm never going to type it again and I really want it to be clear what's going on. Uh, so expected starting balance is going to be 1000 minus amount withdrawn minus expected capital gains tax. Um, Yes. The amount withdrawn is going to be here. And the expected capital gains tax is here. And our expected result is going to be expected starting balance 
after withdrawals uh, times 1.25. Ah, converted to an integer. Oh, okay, why isn't that working? Okay, well maybe our expected capital gains tax isn't 666. This calculation is wrong. Well, let's just return our modified start and see. Is this another rounding issue? Oh, well, there's the problem. Our interest rate isn't 1.25, it's 10%. Um, and I'll bet you, if I come back in here and put everything back the way it was, that that will work. Okay, so the error was in my test. Um, so now we should have, so we've done this to do, and um, I think we're done with this. We've withdrawn more than the principal incurs, withdrawing more, blah, blah, blah. Okay, yeah, I think we've done that now. Um, also, that reminds me earlier, I said that I deleted this, but I hadn't. Um, yeah, everything still works. Now, uh, we're not doing the starting principal correctly here. This needs to be here. Um, ooh, maybe not. Well, we're going to have to stop here. I'm going to just put that back. I don't know what's going on there, but next time, uh, clean up. So thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.